<laughs> but to wake you up, to cheer you up, I know you want to see this, and you've already seen a good chunk of this because I already sent you some for your for your uh, video. So this is now page sixty one. So, th so this whole folder comp makes up eight pages hmm. in Firepower. So this is eight pages of Firepower, and it's probably about one hundred twenty some pages easily. So this is the T twenty eight. So gather around everyone and you shall get to hear the story of the Doom Turtle tonight. All right. In the beginning, we needed a tank and it needed to be a big tank. And this is what we originally thought it was going to look like. It was gonna be flat um, <laughs> with a bit with a very flat turret, uh, UFO looking turret that makes almost no sense at all. Hmm. And then here they're talking about um, in March of 44, the Army Service Forces authorized five of them to be produced, of which only two were ever saw the light of day. So it's 8 March. So this actually specifically says 8 March 1945 is when they recommended changing the name from T-28 to T-95. And then, of course, that gets changed all over again. So at one point in 1943, they were actually recommending 24 of them. Uh, and these were produced by Pacific Car and Foundry, which also produced a lot of Shermans. So it says here in May of 45, which as the war is ending in Europe, is when the drawings actually for the tank uh, were sent to Pacific Car to actually be produced. Uh, um so here, yeah, it says 7 February 1945, General Campbell, Chief of Ordnance to General Barnes, requested that the heavy tank T-28 be renamed as a gun motor carriage in view of the limited traverse of the main armament and the fact that the gun was not mounted in a turret. And so that's when it became T-95. And then in June of 46, it was considered that the restricted traverse on the vehicle should not be a determining factor as to whether the vehicle should be called a tank or gun motor carrier. So they decided that was discriminating and shouldn't determine that just because it doesn't have a turret. Uh, and since a gun motor carriage is usually characterized by the provision of relatively lightly armor, light armor protection, and this vehicle was provided with maximum of armor. That's what it says exactly, maximum of armor. Not maximum thickness, it's just maximum of armor. And therefore, satisfies the accepted requirements for a tank, namely a combination of maximum firepower, maximum armor protection. It was renamed as a tank. The weight of the vehicle was as such to place it in the super heavy tank class, which had never existed before. Hmm. And it was therefore redesignated super heavy tank T28. And that, kids, is the rest of the story. <laughs> so the next time someone tells you, you heard it from here, how the naming convention works, it is officially the T28 super heavy tank to this day. And I am skipping ahead trying to find some good stuff. All right, let's 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 look at the data. Let's look at the data. So weight without ammunition, fuel, water, and crew is 181,300 pounds. Weight fully equipped, including the crew, fuel, water, is actually only uh, not even 5,000 pounds more. So the tank's just heavy. Uh, overall, 34 feet, eight inches. Uh, length of the, just the hull is 24 feet, 10 inches. Uh, it is 14 feet and 11 inches, which I actually already knew because we had to measure it for the uh, the new building, making sure our uh, uh, new garage, the roll-up doors we have on the side of the building were big enough for the T-28 to go inside permanently. Uh, it is 9 feet and 5.5 five and inches tall. The gun's maximum height and travel position is just under 12 feet. Ground clearance is 19.5 inches. Uh, the tread, which is the center to center of the tracks. So that kind of gives you like an idea of the, the center, the um, balance for the tracks is 10 feet, 6 inches. So that's, you know, still fairly, it's still fairly narrow view. I think you'll agree when you see it for the first time. You're actually, I think, so if you can agree, it's actually pretty narrow looking. Even with the track, I mean, I know the outer tracks are off, but it's surprisingly narrow looking. Uh, and so ground pressure with the tracks on is only approximately 9.4 pounds per square inch. That's fantastic for a 90 ton vehicle. Of course, though, four tracks, that makes sense. Hmm. Uh, the, tra the weight of the transmission, less oil, is uh, 1,340 pounds. And weight of the differential is just under a ton. Engine is the GAF, the Ford V8 eight-cylinder. Maximum governed speed uh, was 2,600 RPM. 
Maximum coverage speed under low was still 2,600 RPM. Maximum warm-up speed was 1,000 to 1,100 RPM for seven and a half minutes. You had to warm the tank up for seven and a half minutes before driving. And the minimum idling speed was 500 RPM. Uh, 32 quarts of engine oil, 14 and a half gallons for the transmission, 12 gallons for the differential fuel. Here we go. Uh, so get your calculator out, kids, because fuel tank on the right is 137 gallons. Fuel tank on the left is 97 gallons. Vertical fuel tank on the right is 59 gallons. You have a left vertical tank that's 141 gallons. And then the octane rating of the fuel was 87. So you're looking at, a, a, that is a lot of gasoline. That is 130, 270, 335. You're looking at over 600 gallons of gasoline if I'm looking at this right. Easily. Yeah, it's probably closer to 700, 434. Yeah, because some of these are, okay. Yeah, 430. Actually, so. Yeah, that's that's a lot of gasoline. 22 gallons of water or coolant. And here we go, armor thickness. This is really all I really want to kill. Okay, so maximum speed, so maximum speed sustained is 6.97 miles per hour with the wind tier back downhill. Um, nice. So armor thickness... Armor thickness uh, on the sides with the outer track attaches four inches. So your front plate, less gun armor. So that doesn't even count the actual gun shield is 12 inches. Wow. So with the gun armor, the gun armor itself is 11 and a half inches. So you're looking at um, just under two feet of steel on the front of the tank. And then the floor is one inch, which is actually a little bit thinner than I would expect. It's considered it's supposed to be breaking through... Um, Obstacle belts would expect a little more protection from mines, and then two inches of back armor. And only four man crew, amazingly enough. Uh, enough. I guess they decided to get rid of that idea of a minimum of six. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I mean, you you've been in the in the compartment of the T twenty, so you can attest. I mean, if you imagine six guys in there, that'd be pretty pretty crowded. Because yeah. it's most as you can see here, it's mostly taken up by gun. Uh, you think the gun's really long on the outside, but it's even, you know, there's even more to it on the inside because uh, the breach, just to counterbalance it all, is actually, you know, fairly set back. Um, so literally half the tank, of course, engine, transmission, as usual, uh, and then the rest is pretty much gun and ammunition. Nice little top view. And you got your front view. There you go. Some, 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 some naughty, naughty pictures there for Sophie. <laughs> Dummy thick, as it were. Uh, so this is actually, so this is actually our uh, catalog record, essentially stating that we own the T twenty eight and how we came about it, and its history. So this is from, this was last updated in nineteen seventy. No. Okay, so it came in the system into the museum system in '75, and it was, this was uh, written out in 1989. Of course, the pictures start flipping around, basking in the sun. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures. Hopefully, if it doesn't come out so, there we go. That's yeah, not too bad. So you can see it actually being unloaded at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds for a uh, kind of a publicity day. They were already demonstrating off lots of other pieces of equipment. So back there, you can actually see that actually looks like a T23. Uh, Might actually be a T20. That could actually be our T23 that we have in our collection now. Recoilless rifles, other anti-aircraft carriers. So those schematics again. All right, what is this? Because this is... Uh, first report on Project TT2-491. So if you ever want to sound cool and you talk about the T28, don't even call it T28, call it Project Number TT2-491. Actually, if you really want to be cool, call it Tango Tango 2-491. That makes you sound like you're, you know, cool authentication. Um, so this is written in 1947 and pretty much it is a summary of all the development 
and testing of the T28. It's all right here. And interesting enough, it also references Ornance Committee memos and notes. Uh, it's talking about how they actually had to do extensive testing just to figure out the center of gravity for the vehicle because of its extremely heavy weight, it says. That is. Okay, so here's your weight distribution with the inboard tracks uh, removed. Showing how much each road wheel would actually be carrying weight-wise. Wow. And they hold up well. And ask me how I know. <laughs> Ah, that is still to this day one of the worst stressful work days I've ever had. I wasn't even in, I wasn't even working. I was still just a volunteer. So here's talking about the installation replacement of the outboard track. So I have to remember this because I'm going to have to come back to this here in just a couple weeks. Um, so here they're talking about transmission. So now they're talking about different failures and how many miles they had. So that's not. That's actually not too bad. Talking about their, uh, they had their first oil leak uh, in the differential at 452 miles. That's actually not bad for a 90 ton tank. So yeah, per fairly well, just browsing through this very quickly, they're talking about how this is a fairly well built uh, vehicle. Uh, ammunition stowage. Uh, talk, it's referencing photographs I know are in the back. Uh, just talking about how they sit interlaced with each other. And there's locking devices to prevent the rounds from, of course, rolling around as you're driving. It's there's an it interesting paragraph there, if you go back. Because uh, it talks yes. about the conclusion. And it mentions again... Oh! Jeez, wow, you are a really fast reader. <laughs> Based on features of test completed, it is concluded that, in general, the increase in armor and weight without corresponding increase in power capacity has critically reduced the mobility of this vehicle. From the standpoint of mobility, reliability, and performance, the super heavy tank T28 is unsatisfactory. But it does state that the 105 millimeter gun T5E1 is satisfactory. So they like the gun, but they've decided that the vehicle itself uh, is, is not going to be up to snap. And of course, and that's going to feed into the T29 program. So T29, again, Sure, I didn't go into see any combat, um, but the fact that, uh, so here's all the photographs we're referencing, we learned a lot about it. Um, you know, there were probably things on the M1A2 Abrams with as much as it weighs that we learned by building a 90-ton heavy tank. So to dismiss it as a failure, well, it's a failure because it didn't go into combat and get produced maybe, um, but at the end of the day, it, you know, probably helped teach us more than we ever could. Hmm. So I know we've been going on for quite a while looking at lots of paperwork, so I don't want to get too bogged down because uh, I know there's lots of good photographs. You just have to be very careful because some of these aren't in document protectors. So nice little, you know, hand sketch showing where all the components are in the vehicle. All right. People want pictures, I can tell. I can tell. So let's let's look here. <laughs> 